Welcome to the Never Been Promoted Podcast with Thomas Helfrich. Get ready for a thrilling adventure as we uncover entrepreneurial journeys and life-changing business insights every week. And now your host, Thomas. Welcome to another episode of Never Been Promoted. We are here to create more entrepreneurs in the world. We want to make them better at entrepreneurship and better at life. And we're doing this through the uh, teachings and learnings of other people's stories. So other entrepreneurs, uh, they're down the road. They've had experience. They've had good times, bad times, and everything in between. Uh, If this is your first time coming, thank you. I hope it's the first of many. And and if you've been here before, uh, thanks for coming back. Our guest today, uh, his name is Mike Buckman. Mike, how are you doing today? Uh, I am great, man. I'm excited for the conversation. You're the uh, co-founder of of the, the Outdoor uh, network outdoors, right? Is if I have, I think I read that earlier, and and you're an outdoors guy. I don't think you always were, but it, you know, maybe take a few minutes and give your kind of backstory a bit, uh, just a few moments about yourself. Yeah, sure, man. I uh, I was raised as soon as I can remember back. I something I've always done with my my father was we were out in the stream fishing or in the ponds fishing. Uh, I was raised that way. It's something that I grew to love at a very very young age. My first job, I was working at a at a uh, local sporting goods store here where, you know, it was a, a small one-time shop and it was the place that all the people in the local area came to, to get whatever they needed for hunting and fishing. And when I was, uh, when I was 14, that's where I started working. And ever since then, I, I wanted to figure out a way to have a career doing something that I loved, um, something that you have a passion for. But, uh, I was talked into going a different route and I uh, went into computer networking did that for a little while and absolutely hated it. Um, sitting behind a screen for 12 hours a day was just not my, uh, not my cup of tea. And then I went into the logistics world, started as a part-time dock worker and worked my way up to terminal managers uh, in various different locations, but still never really, uh, never really feeling the fulfillment of doing something that, you know, you, you love doing. I love the people I work with, uh, but, you know, the job that you're doing, which it was just a job at that point. Uh, it, it wasn't, it just didn't fill the void that was still there to be, figure out a way to do this more often and, and make an impact for people that maybe aren't as fortunate as I was to be raised in it, to have an understanding of how it all works and how to be successful. You, you make a good point. Um, and I think on anyone's journey who gets to entrepreneurship, um, there's usually a reflection point where you, you're working for others just doesn't feel right anymore. Like in, in the circumstances of life change, like your kids are older, maybe you get laid off, whatever it is. Uh, but you, like, I think we were talking about, we were talking about camp, you've been promoted a lot. So, so tell me about like, you know, before you've launched this, you know, you, you have this tie back to something, um, from your childhood that was pure, it was fun. It was clean. You know, it was something you loved, right? Truly like that was something you looked forward to. Tell me, tell me about your journey. You know, like you, you said, you, you know, you networking this, how did it feel along the way? Like how, tell me about kind of the describe, like, you know, your, that angst, I guess is what I'm probably looking for that, that is missing from a promotion and you get it and you're like, ah, no. So tell me about how, how that hit you a little bit. <laughs> so I started, uh, I was doing the networking thing and started as a, a part-time warehouse employee at night just because uh, the first child was on the way. So like, all right, got to start saving, got to start figuring out how to, how to make more money. You know, kids are expensive. That's what they kept telling me. And uh, mm-hmm. as they get older, they get more expensive. But, you know, so started the part-time job as a dock worker and, I, and something that I, I, it took me until I was like 23 years old and I realized like my dad, he raised me in a way not to do anything half-assed. Like if you do it, do it right. If I cut the grass and I miss spots underneath the tree, you know, you, you lower the wheels on the lawnmower a couple inches. All right, go cut the whole yard again. So I, I you know, you learn not to miss spots, right? You learn not to take shortcuts. If you're going to do it, do it right. Well, at a very young age, like that sunk in and that's just, that's the mentality that I had. So in the workforce, you know, as a part-time dock worker, whenever there's things to do and I saw things unknown or what have you, I just, I did them the way that I knew they were supposed to be done. Uh, in a very short time, they offered me a management position. Uh, I, I never had any aspirations of doing more than the part-time position, but uh, the logistics world intrigued me. So I, I, I took the position. Uh, I became one of the youngest managers that they ever had at, within FedEx. And, uh, you know, it, it was fun. It, it, you know, being in a position of leadership, I did enjoy that. I, I liked being able to make things better for other people. I liked being able to you know, be in a position when somebody had a problem or somebody, you know, was in in need of learning how to do something a better way. I was the one to able to show them. 
I enjoyed that thoroughly. But it was in an industry that, you know, it was just, it was, it was still just a job, right? Um, I then got an opportunity to transfer to a, a different company within the logistics world, but in a, it was in a hub. So it was a lot higher visibility, a lot more things happening. I had 141 employees underneath of me. So, you know, you go there and you're running that facility. And again, being in a management position, being in the leadership position, that is a position that I, I, I thoroughly enjoy. I love being in a position to be able to make an impact for multiple people. Uh, but, you know, the impact that I was making was it, it was, you know, I, I made things better for people and I knew that, but it still wasn't what I really wanted to be doing. It wasn't it wasn't what I wanted to to make the impact in, um, you know, the the when I wasn't working, we were out, we we're either hunting, fishing or playing baseball. My kids, they, they, they love sports. So it was either one of the three things that we were doing. And, you know, as it progressed and you, you get to upper management positions and you're in, you know, a, a position in the corporate world that I thought I wanted to be too. I, I, this is where I wanted to get to and I'm there, but then you realize, you know, you're, you're still working for somebody else. Um, I, I got, got into some difference of opinions with moral, things that I thought were morally wrong with one of the companies and and we decided to part ways. So I parted ways and I realized like, you know, wow, having a job, it's not really financial security. It doesn't do much for you. You know, at any point in time, you're somebody that can just be not, a number that's not there anymore, anymore. Right. <laughs> so in the old, no, in the old all the time, yeah. even, even in some places they maybe do it where you don't feel so much as a number, but nonetheless, you know, you are when it comes down to it, you know, if, if they can find somebody else to do what you do, maybe they don't do it as well as you do and they don't have the impact that you do, but they meet the metrics that they want them to meet and they, they, they survive, right? They get by. So from there, I went to a privately owned company, which, uh, which I really enjoyed. So I, you know, I worked directly with the owner. Um, we made a lot of changes. We grew the business. Then the business sold. Uh, that was part of the plan, but uh, I, I, I wasn't a part of the sale. So, you know, my role after the sale, going from a privately owned business to a corporate business, you know, corporately owned business that had multiple locations, you know, my role as, as a GM role was divvied up into multiple different positions. And I was left on the outside looking in again. So I was, I was let go back in October uh, of last year. And, uh, you know, I'm like, you know, here we are again, relying on somebody else to tell me when to be where I need to be there how much I can make. I'm, I'm capped. I can't, I can't do any more than what, what you tell me I can do. And now I don't have no income. So that was really what pushed me over the edge uh, to, to, to really delve into this. You know, it was always there. Uh, it's been going on for three years, but it was always a, mm -hmm. a side, you know, a side gig, if you will, uh, something that we were doing and my partner and I, it's, it's, and it's growing. It's been exponential growth the last six to eight months. It's been great. But, you know, really diving in and putting in the effort, uh, going 100% these last couple months has, has really made a big difference. Uh, and it's uh, it's exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to where things are going to be. And I, I'm making the impact that I want to make. I'm sharing my passion, something that I love doing with others, whether they're new at it, whether they're experts, whether they've never, never even stepped foot into the field for any reason. Uh, we, we've covered the bases from people that, from that level to people that have done this growing up just the same uh, and the impact we're making and the people we're bringing together and the friendships that we're seeing come from this. And subsequently, the business deals that are coming from people that, you know, you, you, you trust and feel as though you can do business with. It's, it just, uh, just it's been a great journey. Seconds, like to, to about what, what you're doing in this in, in your business right now. So Network Outdoors uh, is, the, is the name. And it uh, so it came from. Looking back on the relationships that I have, the longer stemming relationships that I have, and my partner as well, they all generated from meeting that person at an outdoor event, whether it was on a fishing trip, on a hunting trip, in an outdoor store. Uh, the common theme was that the passions that we had were similar and in line with the outdoors. And I have relationships with people that, you know, 20 plus years that you only see a couple times a year when you go on fishing trips. But when you see them, you pick it back up like you never like you never left off, you know, um, you know, even, you know, you have some of that with people that you went to school with. But and, and it might just be me, but most of mine, most of those petered out after a couple of years. But these these relationships have have lasted the ones that that the longest ones that I have all stem from that. So we made it intentional to put those people together, find people that that have a passion for the outdoors, but also want to network and grow their business. 
whatever that business is. It doesn't mean every there's there's outdoorsmen in every type of industry, every type of industry that's out there. So, you know, instead of doing the conventional networking event, you know, where you're you're, you know, going to a some hall or some some, you know, building in the town to go meet up, whether it's lunch or what have you. We hold events where we're going out, we're shooting trap, we're shooting skeet, uh, we're we're going on hunting trips, we're going on fishing trips, uh, going out, taking the boat out on the lake and, you know, talk business for a little bit. But, you know, at some point, ultimately, you're connecting with the person. When you connect with somebody, those are the people that it's just easier to do business with. Those people you have, a, you know, a connection, a relationship that's built from that connection. It's it's just a lot easier to relate you, your business yeah, with people that you trust. And right? you're, uh, you, you touched on lots of things I want to circle back to, but just from a you know, let's say someone's listening, they're uh, what I would call a hyperactive buyer. I'm one. How do I, is it an invite only? How does someone get involved in it? No, it's uh, so we have the website networkoutdoors.com, but our members have been phenomenal. Like when, when we get somebody in, they're an ambassador for what we're doing. They get in there, they're like, man, this is great. And it's just, it's been a lot of just word of mouth. So we have, uh, Various chapters and we have nine states, 16 chapters, I think is what we're up to now. So we're, we're hopefully, I mean, I want to have multiple in every state when we're said and done. Uh, but the way that it works, you know, you don't have to pay anything. You show up to the meetings. It's a, you know, a, a prospective member, if you will, comes to the meeting. We provide food and drinks. And then the, you know, we, we take the time to go around the room. Everybody introduces themselves. Uh, what got them into the outdoors, what their passion is in the outdoors and what industry that they're in, what, what work do you do? What is your livelihood? Uh, and then from that, it's, it's just a real quick, you know, blip around the table talking about what you do. And then from there we go have fun and we go shoot trap or we shoot skeet. And then after a couple rounds of that, you know, we come back, usually it's back inside to the clubhouse or what have you. And, and then hang out and just, you know, catch up or talk to people that were maybe in an industry that you need help from, or you need something with, or maybe, it's somebody you can help with connecting yeah, them to somebody right. else and, uh, and so on. You know, I think the the role modeling event, I think some of your posts I've seen on LinkedIn, you know, about how your son got hooked. <laughs> I love a good pun um, on fishing. My son is the same. It's uh, you know, we have an <laughs> annual fish, fishing derby in the lake we live near. And, you know, he's won it one year. And, you know, the next year you, you catch eight, you know, eight, or, you know, 1.8 more pounds of fish and uh, you're, you're in fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually I'll be, I'll be, I love the story. So the, you know, we, we hit our limit for this fishing derby and we had the biggest bass in the entire derby. And it turns out when the kids division, a catfish can count towards it. So somebody caught whatever size cat. Anyway, so I was, I was a little pissed about that, but I was like, Oh, if that's the deal. I'm going to go get some liver. We're going to go hit a pool. A couple of the pools. I know I'm going to pull out, you know, <laughs> six, eight pounders and come in 48 pounds. And we're going to, we're going to tell it, tear this thing up. Anyway, the point being is um, you, you've gotten your kids hooked in. I think, you know, the more dads, I, I'm going to say dads, I don't know. I'm going to say it's a men's only group, but from my perspective, the more dads that can be out there as role models that are doing outdoor things. I think that's way better. I mean, I play games with my kids, but I'd much rather go out and, you know, fish with, with, with my children. And I think that's a fantastic uh, place to be. You also, though, I see, you know, it seems to have some kind of a faith-based piece. Do, do you bring that into your business at all? Or is it, is it just kind of prevalent in your, just your demeanor and, and how, who you are? Do you, you want to talk about that a little bit? No, absolutely. Yes. I, I, I definitely am a person of faith and, and anybody that knows me knows that's the case. Uh, you know, we say grace before we have our meals and things like that. I, I'm not one to, to, to preach to anybody. You know, I, I, you live by example. And if you want to know, if you want to know anything, or if there's, you know, if, if somebody has something, I'm, I'm always quick to, you know, tell them, Hey, well, you know, I'll add you to the prayer list and, and make sure we keep you in our thoughts and our prayers for whatever struggles or tribulations that, you know, that you're going through. Uh, but, but being grounded and having, having, uh, just a reassurance that, you know, that there's yeah. something more than, than what we are, uh, is, is definitely, that is, that is something that is, that is prevalent and it's, it's made known, but again, it's not something if, if somebody's not they're they're never going to feel uncomfortable that they're not. And if they are, you know, it's not going to be a, you know, an op, you know, a, a, a place where they, yeah. you know, they you're get preached to or preached at, mound, if you will. Like in the middle of the, as you're a high load, <laughs> exactly. you're shooting. Like, <laughs> sorry. Um, the, uh, it's funny because I, I recently did a post. Uh, I, I do posts on Sundays just as a, you know, here's, and I love to give little tips for entrepreneurs as a good hack for a LinkedIn. If you see a little, down arrow and people, you know, looking at your profiles and stuff every weekend, go do a fun post on a Sunday. That's kind of meaningful to you. Um, and so just take that. It works. Um, and don't do it for the purposes like, you know, of, of 
you know, philanthropy for profit or something else. Just do it because it's something that's interesting to you and for no other reason. Uh, but I did one because I've, I've been on a bit of a faith journey in the last few years. And I wouldn't call it religion. It's just more of higher purpose, bigger power, better better uh, behavior of how you teach and or not teach, uh, live, right? And just how you treat people, grace, all the kind of things that go with it. And I did a post of, hey, you know, um, have you, is faith in, integrated into your business? Like, is it there? And, and it's funny because I've really, since in my journey, I've really put into this idea of altruism and service into the things I do in my business that would not have been there three, four years ago. I would, it would have been me, 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 no doubt about it. <laughs> and uh, even this podcast, uh, the, the, the community cut the tie that we're starting, all that stuff, that's to help entrepreneurs become better. If we make money from it, that's awesome. Great. You know, I'll, I'll put a lot, I mean, almost all of it, I'm sure right back into the community because it's not our primary income. But it's because there, I have a sense of something bigger now. And I think what you're sh- tying it to uh, is it's even one step past because you're tying it to actual nature. And I love that. Like you're making it. And, and there's careful, right? The, making the business out of your p- passion can quickly ruin that, <laughs> that passion. <laughs> so um, so that was my – anyway, I just wanted to appreciate and maybe just put out there if anybody who's just wherever they are in your journey in life, just know that if you're tying something bigger – it has more value. Everything you do in life becomes more valuable and you get focused on what is valuable. So take, take that where you are. I will get off the, 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 the mountain now and, and let you talk here, but um, tell me about that though. So you, you've made a business uh, that's tied to a passion. You've gone through a few exits in the corporate world, disagreements, all the things that happen. Your, your, your self identity gets wrapped up in a passion and it gets now wrapped up in a business. Are you, are you worried at all about that kind of, tearing down of a passion and self-identity if, if, if some, you know, it's, it's the risk side of this fails or it doesn't work. No, um, I'm not. And, and there's a couple of reasons for it. Uh, but just to hit back on, on what you just, you just alluded to there a little bit, you know, being a bigger purpose. I, I, one thing that I do believe is we were all put here to serve others. And the more that you do that and the more that you can give back to others, uh, whether or not you want to call it karma or it comes back around, whatever you want to call it. Um, it it's, that's been something that's been true. I've, I've watched in my parents' life. Uh, they're 82 and 83 years old now, and they they never did anything but give back to the community. Uh, and that's something that within what we're doing, what we're creating, each chapter, each quarter, we do uh, different works with nonprofits. And, the, and the, each chapter has four different nonprofits that we try to do work with each year, whether it's circling back to the same ones or not. But always giving back to the community and trying to create places where, you know, it's, it's going to be a legacy versus what, what it is now. It'll be something that'll be here to secure this type of activities for generations to come. And, you know, making that more prevalent to others and understanding that conservation comes from, you know, mostly the outdoors world, uh, the people that are involved in hunting and fishing while, while they, they have a, you know, all the, the, the lovers of nature that say you shouldn't kill or you shouldn't do any of that, you know, they don't donate any money to conserve any of this stuff. You know, billions of dollars a year come from the hunters that are out there doing this and conservation. The biggest conservationists are us as hunters. So, you know, trying to make a a bigger awareness of that. And then at the same time, bridging the gap for people that want to do this, they, they, even if it's for just a a reason of being more self-reliant, like they, they want to, you know, if, if, things go in a way where they want to be able to provide for themselves, whether it's farming or, or being able to trap or kill their own food and, and, and you know, self-sustain that way. Uh, we've had a couple mm-hmm. people that came to us for that reason. Uh, other than the, the enjoyment, it was more of a, I, I want to be more reliant on myself. I want to be more self-reliant. So this is what I want to learn to do. Yeah. You know, bridging that gap is something that, uh, that I enjoy doing. And I love introducing people to this. I've been very fortunate over the years to be able to be in a position to, take people for their first time, whether it was a first time, you know, killing a certain type of animal or whether it was the first time catching a certain type of fish or getting their personal best. Uh, and, and when you're able to be involved with somebody's first time doing something that only happens once ever, you know, you can only do something for the first time, one time. And to be able to be a part of that, it, it creates such a, uh, for lack of a better term, an adrenaline rush. It, it's more than that. It's a, it's a whole feeling of just, Mm-hmm. ecstasy, if you will. I know it's, it's just, it's amazing what it does for you to, to see the enjoyment and their excitement and knowing that you contributed to that and you see what, what stems from that. Like 
it, it wasn't a one-time thing. This is something they're going to go do and, and talk about and tell their friends about and then try to repeat as much as they can. It's There's no second to that for me. And I want to be able to repeat that as many times as I can throughout this journey that we're, that we're building. <laughs> you said earlier that kids, kids get expensive as they get older. Uh, so does hunting and fishing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to create, by the way, a hunter's no widow or a golf widow or a chess widow. You want, to, you want to keep these people included in your life. So don't go disappear every weekend. You got to balance guys. Um, you know, but you coming back to the passion and stuff, you know, to me, you know, I, I think if you can make a business around something you love to do and the business itself is set up to full, further facilitate that and you can keep the identity of yourself in that as part of the core tenant of the business, I think you're safe. Um, I think it's when people maybe say, Oh, I love art. And they just like, they have to go create a bunch of stuff. They don't want to, to make money. That's where I think it breaks down. You're, you're not saying. Yeah. I mean, making a physical right, product. Or if you're like, hey, listen, we, we, just, we don't, you know, we don't only kill for trophy. We actually want to harvest and, you know, there's gotta be a part of this kind of give back or, and you're, and you're right, by the way, you know, I'm not one who's ever been hunting. I don't judge it. I just have never seen the need and, and never like, you know, I'd be okay with it. I think my, on my end, I think it's not so much about having a trophy. It'd be more about as long as we harvested the food to me, it's no different than eating a cow. Like it's, there's no difference. I was just the one, I was just the executioner on this one. Right. Um, I hunt pigs all day. I right. love bacon. Just to be clear, I will take a hog and every inch of it will eat. <laughs> right. Ba- I bacon mean, makes meat, everything better. Some salt in that shit. I'll just, we'll cook every bit of it. That's fine. Um, but a deer gets a little gamey, so I don't have any interest in, in you know, it, maybe jerky out of it. If you can jerkify the whole, is that a word? And that's that's all in how it was harvested and how it was processed. I I've had people tell me that, and I've cooked them venison, and they had no, well, I mean, no it, clue. It was if venison. it goes wrong, just make jerky out of it, and that's great. <laughs> it all goes sideways. Yeah, hang it. In there's the always the backup smoke. Um, but listen, I, what I think is though, is, is that you're, what you're tying to is you, you've taken the, the, you know, you, you know, it's basically you've cut the tie, if you will, to corporate because you're just kind of, you know, sick of being, I found that my identity was so wrapped up in my success and what I provided for work. I, I had a tough time on that. Like, you know, that's something I'll, I'll, you know, of, you know, things are going great. All of a sudden you're like, you're out like what? And like, you know, I, there's no contingency for that. And then and yeah. as you get older and you've, if, you've, if you've taken risks to take other jobs and not stayed in one long, which is, you know, the cog of the wheel that's required, you're screwed. Um, ageism will start coming in in your 40s that, you know, you're too expensive, basically relative to what you can do. And in, in you're just and once you put the word founder on your LinkedIn, forget it. There are no more interviews you're going to get. <laughs> um, speaking from experience of a plus 1,000 applications in my first year when I was building my company. I'm actually glad no one though called me. So, I was, cause I, so I, yeah, I, I, you know, you might, you're, you're hitting on something there. Cause when I first got out, you know, I, I put in applications, but the whole world of being hired, you know, I haven't had to put an application in 20 years. Everywhere I went was intentional. And, uh, it's a, it's a huge difference from what it was then. I mean, with AI and everything being automated and, you know, your resumes, you almost have to yep. cater a resume to every job and, you know, keywords and it it's is. a full time job. You're selling one job, thing man. one time yourself and you got to close one deal. And I will tell you though, the AI, right. you know, that's my background. And I will tell you, I use that just to see if I could get an interview, like where you're, you're matching your, your history and everything to it. It doesn't matter. If you put the word founder on there, it's over. I mean, it's over. You, you, you entrepreneurs yeah, if you really want to think about getting another job don't put the word entrepreneur founder ceo of anything you will not get a job so just go all in but i will say so now that the court severed you're about six seven months into it or whatever so um uh tell me about the future a little bit like you know what are you worried about uh and and and, and we'll back into some some of your challenges along the way here but what do you, you know you're you're in a really critical spot right because if you don't create money then you get social pressures from the family <laughs> and other things but you don't want to give this up now for sure. That's clear as it, as it comes. And so tell me about what you're kind of worried about moving forward here. I, you know, I think it's probably the biggest worry that, that anybody in any business is worried about. And that's, that's profit is cash flow to be able to sustain. It's not about, I don't, I don't want a luxury, a life of luxury. I don't need to make millions. I just you want buy to ammo when sustain cheap, and get right? by, right? Below a certain level and, and, around. You're like, I want to stock up. And I, if I oh, can't yeah. can do that. Right. And, and, you know, that's, that's always the biggest, that's always the biggest worry. You know, you, you, you got bills that are never going to stop coming, you know, yeah, as an entrepreneur, you, you got to get out there and get your own medical, your, you know, all that stuff that was, you know, in the corporate world, you didn't really pay a you. whole lot for I would, I'll uh, in there. comparison. Medicaid, amazing. I've had never had better care when we were first starting and just on Medicaid. 
and you feel embarrassed to be on it, to be clear. But then I was like, I got heart stuff done, EKGs. I got nuclear. I was like, I did a lot of shit in here to learn about myself of things that I would never have done on regular insurance. And it was better service. It got done faster. I didn't pay anything because I was in a spot where I didn't. But that embarrassment of having to go on Medicaid because it makes you feel like you're like poor. It's just where you are in the life. And I was like, you know what? I don't care. I'll stay on the show here forever if I had to because <laughs> it's so much better. Anyway, I know what you mean. And, and it's, you, but you, you just talk that chapter, right in the beginning. You're like, this is actually, I actually think this is how healthcare should be. I shouldn't have to be spending $18,000 a year to, 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 to keep my wellness just in case. Right, just in case. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, I, we won't go down that rabbit hole or we'll have to start drinking and I quit drinking and I, I will, you know, I just yeah, want to start drinking that's... again. I just, I just, it was a choice. I wasn't, it was like, I had a problem. I didn't check myself with anything. I just got bored. Where did I go with that? Here we go. All right. What do you worry about yeah, in the future? That's a good thing. Drinking? <laughs> hey, dr- hey, firearms and alcohol <laughs> and uh, have gone together since the eighties. So it's <laughs> No, yeah, right. Do not use firearms and alcohol. Like That's public service brought alcohol, alcohol into the prohibition was led by right. led by <laughs> guns. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's that's really the big one. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's a big thing to to be able to to make sure you know we, we create something that's going to want to be something for people that they want to be doing. It does, um, but you, but you that make sense. It's free, you know. Um, I will tell you, there's no way in hell there should be a free thing. It, because it, it is free for the exclusivity of of like minded people. They pay for that, and the fa- fact that they can meet with a bunch of dudes and they know that just a bunch of randoms are going to come in there, and everyone's kind of validated that they are of outdoor belief. They have maybe some type of faith, whatever it is. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think because for my marketing hat, that's what you'll make money on by people who want to have that experience, and they don't. No one's going to be around to ruin it for them. No, and and there is a paid there is paid memberships, um, but the initial oh, I gotcha. you know come out check yeah, it so out see it doesn't cost you anything because I was like man don't give it away. Yeah, there's a yearly a yearly fee and then a monthly fee, uh, and the monthly fee essentially just if you're paying a monthly fee, you tend to yeah, go to the thing that game, you're paying for, sure. for, right? There's no doubt. Yeah. Right, and 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 that's so that that just covers the the cost of that. We're not I'm not making any money on the monthly fees. It's just to get people there to put them in a place where they're they're paying to be there, so they're more likely to show up. Uh, then we have a yearly fee that we pay, and we we also incorporate our our network within different guides. So we we connect with different guides. So we have uh, member pricing for certain things that are are significantly better deals for people that are within the network. So there's a there's a perk to that as well. well yeah, I mean, the, the, and that's a great business model, right? Because you take people who get basically, um, I mean, that's the other side of your business, right? Is you get guides who can pay to be referred in that also get preferred pricing, but they also get their cost of sales to zero. And so they're, you know, you're handing people deals. <laughs> exactly. I would think too, like an annual event, like, you know, like a, uh, I know it's outdoors. This might be different, like, but just just the idea is like you know close quarters training or something. You guys show up to like some kind of fun. Hey, you show up for this weekend. You do some like you know Call of Duty action, going with paintball or something, or you going through a stuff like this. So we our our Dallas chapter, um, we did uh, airsoft, and then our uh, our Dallas North chapter, we did uh, we did do that. We have a there's a one of our members, one of our corporate memberships. Uh, is, is one of those facilities, and it's uh, that is pretty. It's, awesome. it's pretty that'd awesome. Be, that'd be a fun. It, uh, it's it's a great team building, and it's a family environment. It's it's something that you get the whole family together to do, and uh, you know it, that's that's huge. I think if you can get you know wives, kids involved as well, it's not just about you know the business owner. We we want to get everybody involved, you, uh, incorporated. Just and we'll side note here: if anyone listening, you can go get a coffee if you want to hear this story. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 one of the funniest videos I've seen online is, uh, I think it's in Dallas actually, it was Dallas SWAT versus a professional airsoft team and how tactically fast Dallas SWAT destroyed this team. Like not one guy was lost or hit on the SWAT team and how they just surgically went through and absolutely annihilated like a professional airsoft team. <laughs> it's like it was, it wasn't even on the same. And I'm thinking, and that's Dallas SWAT, who's I'm sure excellent. But I imagine what the SEALs team would do behind that or like a Green Beret or somebody like it would be uh, it'd be off the charts. I was invited to a couple different ones and there was one where that was the case. Like there was a th- – these guys were just 
full decked out, dude. And it was it wasn't even a competition. It was like first of all, you look at it and you're wow. like, how am I gonna beat that? And they, you know, it, it's just amazing because I don't think people realize like the science of of that type of interaction. But uh, what's your? Let me ask you. So, what's your favorite uh, kind of hunting experience you've had? Like, what's one, what's or what's one maybe that you haven't had as well? Because it was like this was the one I was. Oh my gosh, it was awesome, and now I want to go do. So, my huge passion is archery hunting for for whitetail. Um, I, I that's something that I love. I love bow hunting. That's hard. Uh, that that's Rambo ish. I mean, I, I'm, that I will always be what I. Like, you might be Rambo. <laughs> We don't know. That, that's what I always, that's what I love doing. And, and one of my bucket listers, uh, I want to go to Alaska. America. He's get on a plane. I, I want to go. go yep. It's just very, very expensive to go hunt. That. <laughs> to go do like a doll sheep or a mountain goat hunt. It's like 45 grand. Why is it so much? Like did the payoff end you eat? What is it? <laughs> I, <laughs> it's, you know, yeah, if it's that's crazy. your life goal. What's you're going to take it's, that money with you or that memory. So, um, you know, yeah, no, you know exactly. how you do it? I'm going to tell you how you go do uh, it. And, and you go find 10 other guys like you and you tell them, hey, listen, it's 50K to go. That extra 5,000 from those 10 just paid for yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or, you know, my my goal is to connect with a guide out there. We're going to make it a network outdoors trip because we do have some people in the network that are, you know, they're they're financially in a place that is where they're good, right? They're They're in a place where that's, they do those types of trips. They go elk hunting two or three times a year where it's 20 grand. They do it a couple times a year. You know, they're, they're in a position to do that. So my, my, I find a guide that wants to partner with us. We make this a yearly event and for getting him five or six Heck clients, yeah, so this is a I get to go. Interview. Um, anything like, uh, you know, like, you know, I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm looking for my, my, go down okay. my computer just in two seconds. Uh, this part is taught, brought to you by network outdoors. <laughs> and as he searches for his plug, you can go to net is a network <laughs> Right, yeah, there's a plug within there. a plug. You right, to plug in something. I was like, well, it's. I like it. I like. By the way, I don't know if you guys are you guys aren't seeing this if you're listening to this right now. He has a, an extension cord that has like this guy's organized. You can tell how organized he is. How he has wrapped this extension cord up. I see your business though because you have so much passion in it, and and, and I'm going to put my marketing hat on there. And I think this is for entrepreneurs listening. I, the, do what you want with this. You don't want to exclude, but at the same time, you need an exclusion. And, you know, if you if you keep this very male focus, some hint of faith piece, um, exclusivity and like, you know, it's it's simple, but we really like we take pride in what the hell we do. So no half assets. So when we do it, it's nice. We get good food. We get good steaks. We have we try to stay at a nice place or the, we get the right like setup. So you feel comfortable and you have fun, whatever it is that brand people were like, hell yeah, if someone can set all that shit up for me, I, I'm in. Right. I'm Because that's what I want. I need the man time. I need the, the outdoor time. I want my son to be part of it, whatever it is. Um, I hope you do it that way. And I think, I think you'll see like incredible, ex- even more growth than you've already seen because it's even I'm excited. And I haven't been there um, to, to, to do it. I, Cause I think it'd be fun. I've never done anything like that. I know I don't own a gun. I know. D- wait, wait, I know. Don't come out of your seat. I don't own a gun. I know I live in Georgia. It's okay. I've got this one right here points to right arm and left arm points to left arm. Those are all the guns I need. <laughs> I would bow hunt. I think that'd be hard to tell. I think bow hunting. Are, do you keep it like fifty yards? Or what's the what's the technique that to make sure the thing doesn't run off for two miles? And you're like, damn it. You practice a lot. Uh, yeah. You know, you owe it to the animal to be good at whatever you're doing. I, yeah. I feel like you know, what, no matter what you're doing, you should be proficient and good at what it is. So uh, a lot of practice. But yeah, for the most part, fifty yards or so with a compound bow is my my goal. The, the big thing with bow hunting though, is doing all the scouting and the homework, right. To set it up to where you're within 20 yards, 25 yards. Like that's the adrenaline rush, having him right in your face where you can see his eyelashes when you're closing the deal. I will say uh, if you'd like to, my backyard has about eight to nine every day. Um, and <laughs> don't, don't, don't offer if you don't mean it. I'll come down. We'll fish and, and hunt. <laughs> you can fish and you won't have as many deer when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh i mean they're all over we live on, on the back up to a golf course and in, in in this area like they're deer everywhere i mean there's just like you know eight point a couple of the probably that lower buck behind you at, what is that one two three four eight or so um yeah. like they're all over <laughs> like little white tails they're like just lay in the backyard and you're like get out my god um uh i i will say i think i think what you're doing is amazing i really do uh wh- what is like maybe your biggest challenge right now just overall awareness, like trying to figure out the the process with social media to to make a bigger footprint there. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not 
huge into social media. I never have been, but I, I need to, I need to be more so to, to, you know, have a bigger footprint. A digital footprint is huge, obviously with a networking group. <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's my hurdle. Yeah. The, uh, and, and so, you know, and I personally work with tons of entrepreneurs, like, you know, hundreds of them, uh, with this exact problem in mind. And, and I will tell you, it, it's one thing because the, the passion is not there to do it. You know, if you don't want to be on social media, it's even harder when you have to be. And the second piece is wherever you are in your journey, you're going to have to do a lot of your own. Otherwise, you're paying someone to do it. And so there's this balance of not only do I want to not be there, I can't afford to hire somebody, and I, you know, and and I don't want to do it. And so this becomes like the thorn in your side of how you do it. Uh, but, you know, there's there's options, right, with just how you outsource certain parts or just focus on the focus on the one channel you want to find the people that you want. And it might be LinkedIn. It might be just Instagram, whatever it is. Um I'm one who says pick the professional route first. So if, if you're trying to find other professionals that have the same interest, then make, you know, LinkedIn's the place to be, right? And so you, you don't have to do yeah. it all at once is my point. And because it's every time you add a new channel, it's like almost a new business unit. You're, you're going to run yeah. 100%. Yeah, and so, you know, as somebody who has YouTube, has every social media channel on the planet, I'm only on social media like an hour a week total. My team does all of it because I, I can't, I can't even is what I say. <laughs> Us Gen Xers don't do that social shit. <laughs> um, so, so getting out there, so marketing, and then um, you know, and then uh, it's it's just a matter of of that. So, uh, you have a great community, I think. You know, I'll tell you, entrepreneurs, like since you have a community base, how, how many people are kind of? Do you feel like you like you know if you're you could you could call on if you needed help? Oh, I, I have a a, a vast variety. Uh, we're very fortunate in that regard. Tons of sounding boards and, and willing and open to to lend an ear and give advice and give their input. Uh, many of them are a, a have been there, done that scenario. Uh, what I like best is talking to somebody who's who's made the mistakes that they can point out to hopefully help me avoid making those same ones. Uh, yeah, those are the ones that I like talking to the most. Well, yeah. So we'll take that one offline on the social media side. I'll help you save a ton of money and and actually be effective with it. Uh, I will tell you from your own growth. So entrepreneurs, you have a network of some sort. Let's take your top 20 people. Go each, ask each or, you know, or, or segment your groups in 20 and ask each one of them to find one other person to bring along. And every time you do that, you're, you're you know, it's it's 20 becomes 40, becomes 80. Because it didn't end. You won't need to do social media. That group will do it for you. So you guys just post this tag that and just, you know, network outdoor. Like, and it's, it's very simple. Take some shots of you doing some cool things that we love to do, put it up. And this will help us grow with the, with the right group that we want to be with. And if you ask them to go do it, you won't have to do anything. Yeah. And that's something that I've always struggled with is it's not asking, asking for help or asking people to do something for, for nothing. I, I'm quick to do that, but I have a hard time asking others to do that. And that's, that's something that I know I have a struggle with that I got to get, get beyond. Now it's okay to, those that are willing to help, it's, it's, you know, you got to let them help. Well, right. And, and but you can create incentives, right? So part of it is it, it's that humility of, I, I absolutely am terrible at this. I know we need to do this because I want to make sure that we're, this group survives, it thrives, you know, and it grows. I need your help that as you have trips, experiences, you go do it for you. And if you ask for that help for people who are there, who know that's going to help you and they're early kind of founding members, you know, you're you, just, to, just the just just to comment back to them that hey this would mean so much to me and you make it right whenever you can for them that's all i mean that's that's all people look for is that you know at least most guys right are just affirmation you look good today honey you're important to me honey <laughs> like that's all we need we don't need gifts we don't need it i mean maybe permission to buy our own gifts maybe but that's still <laughs> anyway I'm autobiography in here just a bit. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, this is conscious of time, Mike. Where do you want people to go to get a hold of you and who should get a hold of you? Uh, anybody interested in, in whether or not you're trying to bridge the gap to, to get into the, to the outdoors. Uh, we have people in, in all over the States that can, you know, help with that. Uh, be willing to be mentors to, to guide you through that process you can get a hold of us. You can go through our website. It's networkoutdoors.com. And then you can reach me through social media on LinkedIn, Mike Buckman. Uh, you can get me at Mike at networkoutdoors.com. And I'm, I'm always willing to, to lend an ear and talk and, and, you know, share more of what we're doing or, or help you through a, a problem that you're dealing with that maybe I, I have experience in and can help you with. 
Yep. That's great. So networkoutdoors.com, a bunch of other social media will be in the links. Um, all right. So one of the final questions I want to ask, I, I, I'll usually find one. I'm not going to ask about books or anything I normally do here. I want to know in the, in the Hollywood world, animated included, who is the greatest character with a bow ever? Oh, man. And you got to say why. So the one that sticks with me the most is – so yeah, I was going to go Marvel just because I love Marvel. But the one that I see more more people relate to or more people know about and I think that it's huge that they see it is the movie Brave where it's the girl shooting the bow. What? And uh, uh, it's it's animated so it, it gets young kids going. And, and I, I think that uh, – I think that's one that, that I, I thoroughly enjoy watching and seeing the most. So not Kevin Costner or Robin Hood, just to throw that out there. That one didn't do it for you. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't to think Brave too. I mean, though Rambo was a little more violent with it, and every boy growing up who watched Rambo wanted a compound bow um, with some kind of explosive tip, to be clear. Um, but it, it, uh, <laughs> it right? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I actually, you know, you know, you can take a helicopter in Texas, right, and shoot two, two, threes. You know, that's a grenade launcher at pigs while you're – Flying a helicopter. I don't know if you've seen this. <laughs> oh yeah, no. We we one of our chapters in Texas is that's that's something that we're going to do. We're shooting an AR and going to eradicate hogs. They're a problem. They're a nuisance. They ruin property. Right. I just the fact that someone could just maybe do a grenade launcher off of a helicopter just, <laughs> just yeah, decide. That, I almost want to do it just to see what happens. Yeah. You don't want to shoot that one back into the helicopter. I, I'm gonna throw <laughs> that out there. You want to aim that one down and away. Um, uh, th- listen, thank you. Thank you, Mike, so much for coming on. This has been a very fun uh, podcast I, and, and just channel. I, I, listen, get a hold of Mike, uh, uh, networkoutdoors.com. Uh, Mike, thanks for coming on today. No, I appreciate you having me, man. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, this is great. And listen, uh, if this was your first time listening, uh, thanks for staying this long. And if you've been here before, uh, as you know, I give out dad points. Spend them wherever you can um, and let my kids know where you can spend them. And let your kids know, too, because everyone knows dad points. You can get a lot of them, but no one knows what to do with them. So that's great. Uh, I really appreciate anyone who's an entrepreneur who's out there taking that risk. I'm here to help you kind of you know, be better at what you do, be better at life. And uh, if you can get something from any one of the stories you have, you've, you've gotten what you need. If you'd like to come on the show, by the way, always you know reach out. We'll, we'll, we'll get you through the process to see how your own story can help somebody. But until we meet again, thanks for listening to the Never Been Promoted podcast. Get out there and go unleash your entrepreneur. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Never Been Promoted with Thomas Helfrich. Make sure to check the show notes for our guest contact information and any relevant links. Connect with Thomas personally at neverbeenpromoted.com. Thanks again to instantlyrelevant.com for producing the show, all the social media, all the content posts, articles, everything. Could not do it without you. Instantlyrelevant.com. Check it out. They're awesome. Once again, instantlyrelevant.com.